So this video is going to talk about preterm birth. First, I'm going to differentiate between term and preterm labor and birth. So a term pregnancy is the period of time when birth in a healthy pregnancy is expected to result in a good neonatal outcome. This period of time includes babies born between 37 and 42 weeks. So your due date is actually the period which are 40 weeks. So three weeks before, two weeks after, any time you want to have your baby in there is fine by me. Preterm labor, however, is the onset of contractions that produce cervical change after 20 weeks and before 37 weeks of pregnancy, so before you are term, preterm. With preterm birth, the majority of complications occur when this happens before 34 weeks. So babies born after 34 weeks may have longer hospital stays, may need a little bit of help in the NICU or the neonatal intensive care unit, but their long-term outcomes are actually quite good. Something that you might have heard of and is quite commonly experienced are Braxton Hicks contractions or sometimes people call them practice contractions. So what this is is kind of like a, a tightening of the uterine muscle but it's not causing cervical change and that's what differentiates Braxton Hicks contractions from labor contractions. So Braxton Hicks, while uncomfortable, they are not painful or rhythmic. They should go away with relaxation. Hydrate yourself, drink lots of water, have a nice bath, and relax. If you are having signs of actual labor, so rhythmic contractions that do not go away, if your water breaks, or if you have abnormal bleeding, it is important to let your midwife know. Preterm labor and birth occurs in about 5 to 12% of pregnancies. Now, this statistic isn't just for healthy pregnancies. It's for people who have a higher risk of having preterm birth and labor in the first place. So your water might break earlier. You might get those contractions. It might actually be indicated that you have a preterm birth. Sometimes people have medical conditions where it's recommended for them to give birth sooner rather than later. Um, things that increase your risk of preterm labor and birth include if you have a history of having babies early, if you have a multiple gestation pregnancy, so twins, triplets, etc., if you have GBS bacteriuria, which is a urinary tract infection caused specifically by group B streptococcus, if you smoke cigarettes, if you have a vaginal or cervical infection of bacterial vaginosis, chlamydia, or gonorrhea. Also, if we see on ultrasound that your cervix is less than three centimeters in length. If you are having signs or symptoms of preterm labor, like we've discussed, it's very important to let your midwife know, and they will offer to assess you in the hospital. So this might include a vaginal exam to assess if your water is broken or the location of any bleeding, a cervical swab to detect any proteins that are associated with labor, or an assessment of your cervix for change. If you are confirmed to be in labor before 34 weeks, your midwife will transfer care to our obstetrical colleagues and management will depend on what your symptoms are. If you are contracting, a medication might be given to you to reduce your contractions for a couple of days or hours so that you can be given some injections of steroids to help your baby's lungs mature. If your water is broken, you might be given antibiotics to reduce the spread of infection to your uterus and baby while you wait for contractions to start. If you are earlier than 32 weeks, you might be given a drug called magnesium sulfate to protect your baby's brain. If you are at an early gestation, you might be transferred to a tertiary care center like Mount Sinai in Toronto that has access to the level of care that is appropriate for the potential needs of your baby. If you have your baby after 34 weeks, but before 36 weeks, then your care actually remains with your midwife unless you have another reason why we need to involve an obstetrician in your story. We do consult with a pediatrician before 36 weeks gestational age, and that's because those babies often need to be assessed or spend some time being observed in the neonatal intensive care unit to make sure that they transition well from being a fetus to being a baby. After 36 weeks, we actually typically go along with things as normal. Um, and then there are some recommendations between 36 and 37 weeks just for some observation of your baby in the postpartum, like their blood sugars being tested or their jaundice level being tested at 24 hours old. 
Having a preterm baby can be very stressful for parents. You are anticipating more time to get ready, more time for them to grow inside you. The medical care your baby needs is important and important for you to learn about, but don't lose sight of the fact that you are their parent. You can ask to see them, you can spend time loving them and touching them. If they are too ill or young to feed at your chest or breast, you can express or pump your milk and provide them with nutrition. Take care of yourself. You can lean on your partner, your friends, and your family. Your midwife can help you get in touch with counselors or support groups for new parents if this would help you. I have linked some really great resources below in the description about the signs and symptoms of preterm labor and birth, as well as ways to care for and feed preterm babies if you are interested in learning more.